Good day to you all, dear ones, and welcome to this 15th day of March. It is day 74 in our journey through the Bible. Hello to everyone out there. My name is Hunter. I am your brother, your Bible reading coach, someone who shows up with you every day to spend a little time together in the pages of the Bible and point the way to the one who is life itself, the one who has come that we might share in the life that he has with his Father and the Spirit. And so we come from all around the world. Sisters and brothers are gathering here to warm their hearts by the fires of God's love. For God is love. So let's open our hearts to him now as we listen to the book of Deuteronomy, chapters 28 and 29, and we'll finish our reading in Galatians chapter 6. This is the word of the Lord. Deuteronomy 28. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully keep all his commands that I am giving you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the world. You will experience all these blessings if you obey the Lord your God. Your towns and your fields will be blessed. Your children and your crops will be blessed. The offspring of your herds and flocks will be blessed. Your fruit baskets and breadboards will be blessed. Wherever you go and whatever you do, you will be blessed. The Lord will conquer your enemies when they attack you. They will attack you from one direction, but they will scatter from you in seven. The Lord will guarantee a blessing on everything you do and will fill your storehouses with grain. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he is giving you. And if you obey the commands of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, the Lord will establish you as his holy people, as he swore he would do. Then all the nations of the world will see that you are a people claimed by the Lord, and they will stand in awe of you. The Lord will give you prosperity in the land he swore to your ancestors to give you, blessing you with many children, numerous livestock, and abundant crops. The Lord will send rain at the proper time from his rich treasury in the heavens, and he will bless all the work you do. You will lend to many nations, but you will never need to borrow from them. If you listen to these commands of the Lord your God that I am giving you today, and if you carefully obey them, the Lord will make you the head and not the tail, and you will always be on top and never at the bottom. You must not turn away from any of the commands I am giving you today, nor follow after other gods and worship them. But if you refuse to listen to the Lord your God and do not obey all the commands and decrees I am giving you today, all these curses will come and overwhelm you. Your towns and your fields will be cursed. Your fruit baskets and breadboards will be cursed. Your children and your crops will be cursed. The offspring of your herds and flocks will be cursed. Wherever you go and whatever you do, you will be cursed. The Lord himself will send on you curses, confusion, and frustration in everything you do, until at last you are completely destroyed for doing evil and abandoning me. The Lord will afflict you with disease until none of you are left in the land you are about to enter and occupy. The Lord will strike you with wasting diseases fever, inflammation, with scorching heat and drought, and with blight and mildew. These disasters will pursue you until you die. The skies above will be as unyielding as bronze, and the earth beneath will be as hard as iron. The Lord will change the rain that falls on your land into powder, and dust will pour down from the sky until you are destroyed. The Lord will cause you to be defeated by your enemies. You will attack your enemies from one direction, but you will scatter from them in seven. You'll be an object of horror to all the kingdoms of the earth. Your corpses will be food for all the scavenging birds and wild animals, and no one will be there to chase them away. The Lord will afflict you with the boils of Egypt and with tumors, scurvy, and the itch from which you cannot be cured. The Lord will strike you with madness, blindness, and panic. You will grope around in broad daylight like a blind person groping in the darkness, but you will not find your way. You'll be oppressed and robbed continually, and no one will come to save you. You'll be engaged to a woman, but another man will sleep with her. You will build a house, but someone else will live in it. You'll plant a vineyard, but you will never enjoy its fruit. Your ox will be butchered before your eyes, but you will not eat a single bite of meat. Your donkey will be taken from you, never to be returned. Your sheep and goats will be given to your enemies, and no one will be there to help you. 
You will watch as your sons and daughters are taken away as slaves. Your heart will break for them, but you won't be able to help them. A foreign nation you have never heard about will eat the crops you work so hard to grow. You will suffer under constant oppression and harsh treatment. You will go mad because of all the tragedy you see around you. The Lord will cover your knees and legs with incurable boils. In fact, you'll be covered from head to foot. The Lord will exile you and your king to a nation unknown to you and your ancestors. There in exile, you will worship gods of wood and stone. You'll become an object of horror, ridicule, and mockery among all the nations to which the Lord sends you. You will plant much but harvest little, for locusts will eat your crops. You'll plant vineyards and care for them, but you will not drink the wine or eat the grapes, for worms will destroy the vines. You'll grow olive trees throughout the land, but you will never use the olive oil, for the fruit will drop before it ripens. You'll have sons and daughters, but you will lose them, for they will be led away into captivity. Swarms of insects will destroy your trees and crops. The foreigners living among you will become stronger and stronger while you become weaker and weaker. They will lend money to you, but you will not lend to them. They will be the head and you will be the tail. If you refuse to listen to the Lord your God and obey the commands and decrees he has given you, all these curses will pursue and overtake you until they destroy you. These horrors will serve as a sign and warning among you and your descendants forever. If you do not serve the Lord your God with joy and enthusiasm for the abundant benefits you have received, you will serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you. You will be left hungry, thirsty, naked, and lacking in everything. The Lord will put an iron yoke on your neck, oppressing you harshly until he has destroyed you. The Lord will bring a distant nation against you from the end of the earth, and it will swoop down on you like a vulture. It is a nation whose language you do not understand, a fierce and heartless nation that shows no respect for the old and no pity for the young. Its armies will devour your livestock and crops, and you will be destroyed. They will leave you no grain, new wine, olive oil, calves, or lambs, and you will starve to death. They will attack your cities until all the fortified walls in your land, the walls you trusted to protect you, are knocked down. They will attack all the towns in the land the Lord your God has given you. The siege and terrible distress of the enemy attack will be so severe that you will eat the flesh of your own sons and daughters whom the Lord your God has given you. The most tender-hearted man among you will have no compassion for his own brother, his beloved wife, and his surviving children. He will refuse to share with them the flesh he is devouring, the flesh of his own children, because he has nothing else to eat during the siege and terrible distress that your enemy will inflict on all your towns. The most tender and delicate woman among you, so delicate she would not so much as touch the ground with her foot, will be selfish toward the husband she loves and toward her own son or daughter. She will hide from them the afterbirth and the new baby she has born so that she herself can secretly eat them. She will have nothing else to eat during the siege and terrible distress that your enemy will inflict on all your towns. If you refuse to obey the Lord's words of instruction that are written in this book, and if you do not fear the glorious and awesome name of the Lord your God, then the Lord will overwhelm you and your children with indescribable plagues. These plagues will be intense and without relief, making you miserable and unbearably sick. He will afflict you with all the diseases of Egypt that you feared so much, and you will have no relief. The Lord will afflict you with every sickness and plague there is, even those not mentioned in this book of instruction until you are destroyed. Though you become as numerous as the stars in the sky, few of you will be left because you would not listen to the Lord your God. Just as the Lord has found great pleasure in causing you to prosper and multiply, the Lord will find pleasure in destroying you. You'll be torn from the land you are about to enter and occupy. The Lord will scatter you from among all the nations from one end of the earth to the other. There you will worship foreign gods that neither you nor your ancestors have known, gods made of wood and stone. There among those nations you will find no peace or place to rest. And the Lord will cause your heart to tremble, your eyesight to fail, and your soul to despair. Your life will constantly hang in the balance. You will live night and day in fear, unsure if you will survive. In the morning you will say, if only it were night. And in the evening you will say, if only it were morning. For you will be terrified by the awful horrors you see around you. 
Then the Lord will send you back to Egypt in ships to a destination I promised you would never see again. There you will offer to sell yourselves to your enemies as slaves, but no one will buy you. Deuteronomy 29. These are the terms of the covenant the Lord commanded Moses to make with the Israelites while they were in the land of Moab, in addition to the covenant he had made with them at Mount Sinai. Moses summoned all the Israelites and said to them, You have seen with your own eyes everything the Lord did in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh and all his servants and to his whole country, all the great tests of strength, the miraculous signs and the amazing wonders, But to this day the Lord has not given you minds that understand, nor eyes that see, nor ears that hear. For forty years I led you through the wilderness, yet your clothes and sandals did not wear out. You ate no bread and drank no wine or other alcoholic drink, but he provided for you so you would know that he is the Lord your God. When we came here, King Sihon of Heshbon and King Og of Bashan came out to fight against us, but we defeated them. We took their land and gave it to the tribes of Reuben and Gad and to the half-tribe of Manasseh as their grant of land. Therefore, obey the terms of this covenant so that you will prosper in everything you do. All of you, tribal leaders, elders, officers, all the men of Israel, are standing today in the presence of the Lord your God. Your little ones and your wives are with you, as well as the foreigners living among you who chop your wood and carry your water. You are standing here today to enter into the covenant of the Lord your God. The Lord is making this covenant, including the curses. By entering into the covenant today, he will establish you as his people and confirm that he is your God, just as he has promised you, and as he swore to your ancestors Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But you are not the only ones with whom I am making this covenant with its curses. I am making this covenant both with you who stand here today in the presence of the Lord your God, and also with the future generations who are not standing here today. You remember how we lived in the land of Egypt, and how we traveled through the lands of the enemy nations as we left. You have seen their detestable practices and their idols made of wood, stone, silver, and gold. I am making this covenant with you so that no one among you, no man, woman, clan, or tribe, will turn away from the Lord your God to worship these gods of other nations and so that no root among you bears bitter and poisonous fruit. Those who hear the warnings of this curse should not congratulate themselves, thinking, I am safe, even though I am following the desires of my own stubborn heart. This would lead to utter ruin. The Lord will never pardon such people. Instead, his anger and jealousy will burn against them. All the curses written in this book will come down on them, and the Lord will erase their names from under heaven. The Lord will separate them from all the tribes of Israel to pour out on them all the curses of the covenant recorded in this book of instruction. Then the generations to come, both your own descendants and the foreigners who come from distant lands, will see the devastation of the land and the diseases the Lord inflicts on it. They will exclaim, The whole land is devastated by sulfur and salt. It is a wasteland with nothing planted and nothing growing, not even a blade of grass. It is like the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim, which the Lord destroyed in his intense anger. And all the surrounding nations will ask, Why has the Lord done this to this land? Why was he so angry? And the answer will be, This happened because the people of the land abandoned the covenant that the Lord, the God of their ancestors, made with them when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. Instead, they turned away to serve and worship gods they had not known before, gods that were not from the Lord. That is why the Lord's anger is burned against this land, bringing down on it every curse recorded in this book. In great anger and fury, the Lord uprooted his people from their land and banished them to another land, where they still live today. The Lord our God has secrets known to no one. We are not accountable for them, but we and our children are accountable forever for all that he has revealed to us, so that we may obey all the terms of these instructions. Galatians 6 Dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by some sin, You who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path and be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Share each other's burdens and in this way obey the law of Christ. 
If you think you're too important to help someone, you're only fooling yourself. You're not that important. Pay careful attention to your own work, for then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done, and you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else, for we are each responsible for our own conduct. Those who are taught the Word of God should provide for their teachers, sharing all good things with them. Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone especially to those in the family of faith. Notice what large letters I use as I write these closing words in my own handwriting. Those who are trying to force you to be circumcised want to look good to others. They don't want to be persecuted for teaching that the cross of Christ alone can save. And even those who advocate circumcision don't keep the whole law themselves. They only want you to be circumcised so they can boast about it and claim you as their disciples. As for me... May I never boast about anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of that cross, my interest in this world has been crucified and the world's interest in me has also died. It doesn't matter whether we have been circumcised or not. What counts is whether we have been transformed into a new creation. May God's peace and mercy be upon all who live by this principle. They are the new people of God. From now on, don't let anyone trouble me with these things. For I bear on my body the scars that show I belong to Jesus. Dear brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Quid pro quo. This for that. If you do this, you will receive that. That's the old principle of the law. If you keep this covenant and obey all its terms and obligations, then you will receive the blessing of the covenant. But if you fail to keep all the terms and obligations, then you will receive the curses described in the covenant. Quid pro quo, this for that. I hope we can all see how impossible this is for people like you and me, how absolutely terrifying it is. People like us simply can't live up to the standard of holiness that's described here. The level of faithfulness needed to achieve that blessing is beyond our grasp. Thankfully, we see in Galatians a new principle at work, a new promise, a new contract. It's not quid pro quo, it's something altogether different. Instead, this new principle is based upon what God has done for us on the cross. It's based upon a clearer and complete revelation that is Christ himself. God, in his great love and mercy, recognizes that we are unable to meet the demands of this for that. Jesus has fulfilled the terms of that first agreement so that we might know its blessing. He did that on the cross. A new principle is at work in our lives because of him and what he's done. Paul describes it as a new creation. When we read these passages in Deuteronomy, we have to ask, is this what God is really intending for humanity? Is this truly reflective of God's heart? If you don't do what I say, you will be wiped out in the most heinous ways thinkable. You know, the Bible reflects the periods and the times with which it was written. And it also reflects how people understood God in the context of their times and the surrounding culture. And God lets his children tell the story of God. But he doesn't leave us there. No, he will give the final word on who he really is and how he is to be understood and what kind of relationship he is establishing with humanity. And he doesn't simply leave it to prophets and to scribes to write about. No, he comes in person. He shows up in the flesh. God's final word is Jesus. He is the Logos of God. And the new principle is the way of the cross. Self-giving, sacrificial love on behalf of those 
who have nothing to give. It's not quid pro quo, this for that. No, God is not capricious. He's not overly sensitive and insecure. No, God is like Jesus. (laughs) He is God. The new principle is the way of the cross. The cross, which is the ultimate demonstration of the self-giving, radically forgiving, co-suffering, love for God, for others, for the world. So let me encourage you all to take a deep breath after reading through Deuteronomy today and realize that God has shown us who he really is. It's seen completely and fully, wonderfully, in the face of Jesus. Jesus has achieved for us all the blessings of God. He accomplished this by defeating death and the grave on the cross, by giving himself on behalf of all. And now the new principle is that of a new creation, achieved by the cross, the cruciform love of God. Let us live in that reality with gratitude and love. And that's the prayer that I have for my own soul. That's the prayer that I have for my family, for my wife, and my daughters and my son. And that's the prayer that I have for you. May it be so. Well, hey, hey, DRB people. I hope you guys are doing well out there. And I'm wondering if some of you started praying yesterday about my weather blues. I had the blues about the weather. (laughs) And lo and behold, woke up today and the sun was out. And that just did my heart good. I hope your heart's doing good and I hope you're able to get outside and breathe deep. I hope that you're able to reflect on the many ways that God blesses us in this life on his companionship as we make our pilgrimage through life. That's what I hope for you. Those simple blessings and a heart of gratitude and lots of time with those that you love. Well, friend, before I let you go, just want to remind you that our Facebook page has daily postings of Heather's new book, Discovering Jesus, A Journey Through Lent, You should check them out. I've been following along every day, and they're good. I mean, (laughs) I don't want to brag or anything, but man, I tell you, they have spoken to my heart. They're short, they are concise, and they are insightful, and they've blessed me. And I'm sure they'll bless you. So check it out. Head on over to the Facebook page and follow along. And last of all, let me encourage you to share this ministry with the people in your life. Share the podcast, introduce a friend. There are many out there who are looking for a way to nourish their hearts in the scriptures. And that's what we try and do here every day. So introduce a friend. And what do you say we all show up again here tomorrow, friend, and we'll do this again. That's my plan. Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. Your brother Hunter plans on being here. Until that time, let's go forward in God's joy. Let's let his joy be our strength, and let us always remember this, that you are loved. No doubt about it. All righty, I'll talk to you again tomorrow. You guys take care.